as Nick Sirianni comes off the field in Indianapolis with our friend Bob Lang in the middle. There's Dom DeSandro. There's Slay right there. Devontae Smith coming off. And watch Sirianni. He's exhaling big time. He's looking down, and then he's going to get a big hug from Howie Roseman. And when the head goes down like that, that is a hug full of emotion. And you know Duncan fuels rewarding moments. We thank them. What did you think of that moment? I mean, they were down 10 and they won the game. I think that's what he's emotional about. It was a heck of a Yeah, Indianapolis game. has nothing to do I, with it. I really don't the think so. The fact that they fired Frank Reich has nothing to do with it. I don't think that's what was on his mind there. You don't I think, think so? it was an emotional, challenging, difficult day. They came out on top. They're 9-1. and one. He was proud of his team, proud of Jalen. I think that's what that was all about. I, I, I beg to differ because I, I, I think it was emotional because he played their former team. I can remember when I played the Eagles, my former team, in a game that really counted. And... Uh, I was with the Steelers and then, and I played the Eagles, and yeah. it was emotional for me to go out there and, and play against them. I think that this is really an opportunity that, you know, he really wanted to go back the first time playing back in that stadium. They just fired his guy. He really wanted to win this game, you know. Ron Jaworski leaves Philadelphia, goes to Miami, comes back in an exhibition game. What was that like for you? Well, that was different. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? I was, that I was, was a different. player that now I don't care. <laughs> There's always a little You action. sobbed and you <laughs> cried. And I talked to Shula about it, too. And that's what he told me. He called plays just to throw him in front of, in front of the bench at Buddy Ryan. <laughs> exactly. Buddy, watch out. Uh, here is Nick Sirianni, the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, on a great win. <laughs> I don't know you. How are, what's your name? Hi, I'm nice to see you. But you did really great today. I want to talk. Oh, man, that, that, was, a, that was a great win. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't what you you draw up or anything like that. But this, this league, it rarely is, and uh, it's tough sledding. And uh, and uh, it was just, a, it was just a great win to be able to get that. Bobby was just saying that you were pretty emotional afterwards. He thought it was tied to the, your return here uh, to a certain extent. Kind of what are you feeling now that now that it's over? Yeah, I, I you know I'm emotional because I, I love Frank Reich. I, I really do, and he's a, he's one of the best damn football coaches I've ever been around. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was hoping that, that him and I would be able to coach against each other uh, in this game. But he he is one of, he he's my one of my biggest mentors. I got my dad, I got Larry Karras, and I, and I got Frank Reich. And Frank's such a good football coach. And uh, yeah, you don't want to know what I think uh, of if he should be here or not. But because uh, you guys can probably imagine what I really think. Um, and. Uh, I love him, and uh, so I got a little bit emotional about that, and it was good to see the guys that I really cared about and some of the, the, the things that, you know, Quentin Nelson and, and Ryan Kelly and Paris Campbell, I got to talk to them after the game and Kenny Moore. Um, so, th you know, that, that means a lot when they say some, some things that are – obviously, I keep those things to myself. But I spent a lot of time here. My kids – one of my ch children was born here, and it's uh, – it was sweet to come here, especially with what happened in this organization in the last couple weeks, and, and, and get the win, the win. We live in Indianapolis with a win. And despite the, the win, um, there were some struggles early on. Whew. You ain't kidding, Jeff. <laughs> um, some of the decisions, I'm just wondering. So you had three timeouts. You went to the half with. Why yeah, I didn't feel great about how we were moving it, and we and we had to we had slightly beginning of a two minute right there. I didn't want to help them out because they had they had. Uh, I, I just didn't want to help them out anymore with the timeouts, and and I and I you know. Hey, if we lost that game and I didn't do it, I probably would have said, "Hey, I shouldn't have done that." Hey, we won, and and I and I felt good about the decision right then, um, not because you know I have faith in our offense to be able to do that. I just didn't want to help them out to be able to go down and score a touchdown and, and, and try to make them uh, kick a field goal there because they were they had they lacked timeouts. And uh, but our defense was doing a good job at that time. You, you go back and forth with that. You know, that's what I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to go back and forth with that decision. Like, was it the right? Was it the wrong one? Um, but shoot, uh, I got I to gotta stick with my my uh, I don't want to say gut. I've got to stick with my conviction when I when I make a decision and live with it. Not always there. Are they going to be right? And the 10 from the 39, you passed up the 37. Yeah. Um, you know, with where we were right right now, it, it's, it's about, you know, did I feel great about kicking that right there? I didn't, um, and I and I wanted to and I wanted to uh, see if we could get the first down right there, and we didn't. And uh, man, I, I I can't say enough good things about Gus Bradley and his defense and and the way he that guy always gets his players to play for him, um, always. You know, Gus always gets his players. I was I was with him and. Uh, 
uh, San Diego, as you guys know, and he always gets his players to play for him. Um, and they and they always have, you know, they always do a good job on defense. So they, they stopped us there. Um, and again, I have to stick with the decision I made. Hindsight, do I kick it? And yeah, maybe it didn't work for this one. Is it fair to say you simplify things offensively in the second half? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we got to what we felt was, was working at the time. It was, still wasn't easy, as you guys saw, right? I mean, they came out and they had a strip sack fumble um, and got the ball back. That number 91, uh, you know, there's been a lot of battles with him. He's a good football player, um, you know, in the stadium when he was with Jacksonville. Then he then he's found his way to Minnesota, and he was here again. Uh, he, we, we've had a lot of... You've had a lot of nights worrying about him, but I love our tackles, and uh, it wasn't on our tackle. It ended up being on the back, and um, but he's a good football player. He made a good play right there. But, yeah, good good job by Shane calling it in the second half. Stop making some adjustments. All the guys making adjustments, and defense allowed us time to be able to do that. The final drive, um, take us through that and then the play calling process and also the, uh, the, the, the timeout after the two warning call. Yeah, um, well, the, there's a little bit of st a strategy to that timeout after the two-minute call that I'd rather not get into uh, for for reasons um, just so our, our opponents don't know, um, obviously. But you know, we uh, that was that was a big-time drive. Uh, Miles Sanders looked at me and said, "Hey, I'm on the teach tape because." You know, when we talk about if a um, if you're behind the defense, right? If you're behind the defense and you're running and you're and you're and you're and the ball's a little underthrown because Jalen had to really heave it, that plant your right foot in the ground and come back to and, and kind of make sure that you're either coming back to the football, jumping through the football, and he did exactly that. And like you don't you don't think that Miles is gonna be on the go route off of a scramble on that, like because these these conversations are happening, and that's why, you know, I love the process because the running backs and the receivers and the tight ends and the quarterbacks are all sitting in together with the the uh, the pass installs and the pass meetings, and there's always in my head like, hey, should we let the backs go here? This doesn't. But shoot, it worked. It worked out for us today that that he he soaked up a coaching point um, and played it to perfection, right? If we can give all the coaching points we want, but like these players are the ones that got to go out there and execute it. And so he said to me a couple times after games, like, "I make the teach tape." I said, "You're damn right, you made the teach tape." He'll all forevermore will be will be able to show uh, you know Miles Sanders how to how to play a deep ball um, if it's underthrown because you got to try to put your guys in every position like that. But Miles, man, he went up and that was a huge huge play. I'm talking a lot, I know. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I hate to interrupt, but um, you, you really leaned on Hurts there uh, on that last try, that fourth and two <clears throat> quarterback draw, and then the thing just opened up wide on the third and seven there, third and goal. Was there something you saw uh, in, in, on calling that play? Yeah, um, yeah, obviously you go through the process all week and figure out what they're doing and, and not only in the red zone and the tight red zone and the low red zone and the high red zone and two minute, what they're got to have it calls are, where they're going to play. You know, you try to put yourself in every single position you possibly can. And so, um, you know, that uh, – but and then you put the ball in your players' hands that you trust to make the plays at, those posi at, the, at that time. Um, I think you keep saying it that, like, when we need a drive, when we need some points, when we need – you know, you can always lean on our offensive line, right? Uh, even, you know, just you can always lean on him. And then Jalen's special with the ball in his hands. And he made, man, that thing opened up. I, I, I really, I was looking at the play. And then I kind of looked over at Kevin. And Kevin Petula was going crazy and because I kind of put my head down just for a second uh, with what happened on that. And then, you know, he executed and, and we scored. And it was pretty sweet. Uh, but we knew we had to get a stop. And, man, uh, you know, those, those those defensive ends earn the right to pass rush in that scenario. Um, and we got a great pass rush and we got a great defense. I'm just, as you guys see, I'm, I'm excited about this one. What do you think of the run defense, especially coming off of all the criticism they had throughout this week? Yeah, it's, it's not, a, it's not uh, as, as we all know, sometimes I feel like we don't all know this, that it's not uh, indicative of just one game of who you are, right? There's, there's the defensive coaches did an unbelievable job. The defensive players did an unbelievable job. And and, you know, I've been in the stadium when when those offensive linemen over there, Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, you know, have taken over a game. And that because that, that's a good offensive line. Jonathan Taylor's a good back. And uh, there was not there was not much there. And, uh, you know, it, there was not much there at all. So it was it was uh, it was awesome. Right, it's, it was awesome. I'll, I'll be interested to see what the narrative is. Uh, I don't know if, if it will be like, "Oh, they're still 31st in yards per attempt." I'm not sure we are anymore. Um, but and obviously, Linville and uh, did a great job, and it was awesome to see him come in and get reps. He's pretty. He's when he comes off the field excited. I'm, I get excited, and so I love that juice. And Sue did a good job. Those, you know, Tracy Tracy Rocker, our defensive line coach. 
to get those guys ready to play in that short amount of time is, is a tribute to Coach Rocker and a tribute to Sue and a tribute to Linvell that they were able to do it. And that's, you know, and obviously so appreciative to Howie and his staff for getting those guys in here. And they went out there and just, they just played. I can't wait to see what their grades were. Uh, I'm imagining they were pretty good. Um, but yeah, when they come off the field, that, that, that's exciting. Last one, guys. Like this important for a team to build toughness. Yeah, I, I think so. Any any win, you take it any way you can get it in this league, especially on the road. We clawed, we scratched, we fought, and we kept, we kept going, and and we were at, we were winning it, and we won at the end. And so, I think anytime your your back's against the wall, right, and you respond, um, you know, at all at all levels, offense, defense, special teams. Yeah, it feels pretty sweet, and it, and it builds, right? And and you can build from anything, right? I think I was, there was a great Kobe Bryant. He would always talk about, you know, how his his process after a game and how you could build on everything. And that's just, he was awesome. And 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 you can build on everything. You don't want, you would rather build off of a win. But when your back's against the wall, like our guys were today, and. Um, you know, and you fight and claw and scratch. Anything you got to do to win that game, that's pretty sweet, and that brings those guys closer and closer. Hey, I, I'd love to win by more than that, uh, obviously, but we had our back against the wall, and we came out swinging, and, and, we, and we got the win. All right, thanks, Coach. Thanks. Nick Sirianni, I think that's important to soak in what Coach just said. Any win on the road, you take it in the NFL. It's so tough to get a win, period. It doesn't make a difference how sloppy it is. It doesn't make a difference how hard fought it is. You end with one more point than your opponent. That's a win, and that's a good thing. Hey, seven straight road wins for this team. Uh, that speaks to their character, their ability to fight adversity. Uh, it's the longest streak in the NFL right now. It's the third longest in Eagles history. It's hard to win on the road in the NFL. This team has done it routinely. Tremendous focus. That's what you have to have. When you're on the road, there's a lot more distractions, a lot going on. You know the crowd's against. You can't hear a lot of, a lot of, a lot of cards are stacked against you. So yep. really that fo fine focus they had will not only carry them from this day, but all, all the way going you forward. Remember the last time they, the Dolphins of Line played when they were in Arizona? They couldn't hear. The snap count was yep. off. They had their worst game as far as those guys on the, on the outside being able to get off on the ball, get off on the snap. They couldn't hear anything in Arizona. Same thing here, but they played better because they focused. Quickly, it's tough to hear the question sometimes, but he, Coach was asked about the Miles Sanders play, which drew the DPI, which really set them up big time. And, and Sanders went to him and said, did I make the teach tape? Uh, what's that mean? I, I, I love that because, uh, you know, you don't normally teach running backs – when they're throwing up the sideline, what a wide receiver would do when the ball was in the air. But he, Miles Sanders was paying attention when they were coaching the wide receivers. When the ball is underthrown and you're up the sideline, stop, turn, and reach back for the ball so that now the defender is going to interfere with you. So here's a guy that doesn't practice that but was paying attention. He said, well, I now make the teach tape because he was paying attention what, what they were being right. taught. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's a guy that, you know, Miles Sanders, obviously paying attention, probably the biggest play of the game. Look here, Devontae Smith, yeah, A.J. Brown, attention. Quez Watkins. Look at this guy. He's a running back.